Hello guys, in this video I want to discuss the nullity of a matrix A. In previous video I discussed about uh, diagonalization of some matrix and I told that I want to move towards Jordan canonical form but before I want to come back and discuss some topic which is related to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So in this video I want to talk about nullity of this matrix A n by n. And in this video I want to discuss the following thing. So the first one I want to discuss the definition of the nullity. And I'm going to give you like small motivation. The second thing that I want to discuss, I want to discuss that our nullity of A, or in other words, our kernel, is a subspace, subspace of Rn. And the third thing, I want to give you an example where you're going to find uh, the actual nullity of the given matrix A. Okay, let's discuss the first step. For the first step, we're given some matrix A n by n. And what we can think about this matrix, we can think this is as a mapping. And mapping such that we take some vector in our n and map this vector to another vector to our n. So in other words, we're saying that like we're going to take some element x in our n and going to map this element uh, x to vector y by applying matrix A on the left-hand side. Okay, and then we can think about our element y. So we have two choices. We can have either y is going to be 0 or non-zero. So we call the nullity of A, or in other words, the kernel of A, our such element x in Rn, such that when I'm going to apply my matrix A to this element, to this element x, I will get zero vector. So, nil, so nullity of A, it's all vector in Rn such that matrix uh, operation under this vector is going to be equal to zero. Okay, for the second step, I want to discuss the important thing that nullity of A is subspace of Rn. So I want to show that null of A. Okay, and if I want to show that something in the subspace, and subspace of what is subspace of Rn? I want to show the three, uh, the three following things. So the first thing that I want to show that uh, my null a is actually is non-empty. So if you're given like some vector space and you want to show that sub, some subspace of this vector space is actually a subspace, first you want to show that this subspace is not empty. And this subspace is closed under uh, addition. So in other words, x plus y belongs to nullity of a. Uh, where x and y is in A. So I'm taking two, any two elements from my nullity of A and I want to show that there is some actually nullity of A. And the third one is if I'm going to take some any real constant multiplied by any vector from nullity of A, it also belongs to nullity of A. So in other words, it closed under addition and closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, let's check these properties. And if we're going to check and after we're done, we're going to show that nullity of A is a subspace. So let's check the first one. Uh, how do we know that nullity of A is not empty? Uh, we know this because if we're going to take the vector 0 and apply by matrix A, and we know if you're going to take any matrix and multiply by uh, vector 0, we're going to get 0 vector. Do you want to dry or no? Like, no. Okay, so we're going to get 0 vector. So from here follows, by definition of our nullity, that 0 belongs to null A. Okay, first one is done. What about second one? For second one, we want to show this, that there are some belongs to null A. But we know each of them belongs to null A. But if each of them belongs to null A, it means that A of x equals to 0, and A of y equals to 0. So if I want to show that A... Uh, that x plus y equals to 0, I want to show that a multiplied x plus y is also going to be equals to 0. But since I know that uh, matrix multiplication is linear, it's going to be equals to ax plus ay. And each of these terms is 0, so I will have 0 plus 0. And this is equal to 0. So from here I can see that, yes, indeed, x plus y satisfies the condition of belonging to set nullity of A, 
So from here follows that x plus phi, x plus y belongs to nullity of a. And the last thing that I want to discuss is uh, the third property. But this one is really straightforward after the second one. So a of c of x, c I can uh, take, I can take it out. I will have c of a of x. And since I know that x belongs to nullity of a, then this term is zero and c times zero is just zero. Okay. And we check that all three properties are true. So yes, indeed, our null a is a subspace of our n. Okay, and the last thing that I want to show, I want to show you the concrete example. When we're given a matrix and I want to find the nullity of this matrix and the corresponding basis uh, of that nullity. So let's uh, say we're given a matrix A with the following form. One. So A is uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, then 0, 0, 0. And we want to find uh, what is our nullity of A and how we should approach this problem. We want to take any vector x, uh, which is belonging to, in our case, a is 3 by 3. So our x belongs to uh, n equals to 3, to r3. And uh, general form for our, LM, for our vector x is x1, x2, and x3. And then what I'm doing, I'm taking my matrix a, multiplying by any vector x. And then I'm saying that this x belongs to nullity of a if this x is going to satisfy this condition, a times x equals to zero. So in other words, I want to find possible values for x1, x2, and x3. So let's see what are possible values for these expressions. So from here, I will get that uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 times x1, x2, and x3. And by doing a matrix multiplication by vector, I can see that I will have x1 plus x2, x2 plus x3, and 0. And I know that the following things, the following vector should be equal to 0, 0, and 0. Okay. And what I did, I found a relationship between x1 and x2 uh, and x2 and x3. So let's write the, down this relationship over here. So we'll have that x1 plus x2 equals to 0 and x2 plus x3 equals to 0. So I know if my element x belongs to nullity of a, then I have that x, uh, that coordinate of my x satisfies this condition. And you can see here, I can express x1 in terms of x2 and x3 in terms of x2. So from here I will have that x1 equals negative x2 and x3 is equals to negative x2. So in other words, I have if x belongs to nullity of a, then from here follows that x has the following form, uh, negative x2, x2, and negative x2. So I can conclude that any vector which is belongs to nullity of this matrix has this form. And one trick that I can use over here, I can think about x2 as some parameter t. And then I can write my vector x as um, minus t, t, and minus t. Here I can factor my t. I will have negative 1, 1, and negative 1. And I can see that negative 1, 1, and negative, uh, negative 1 is actually going to be a basis of my Okay, uh, Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.